People make things so hard. And some days I just don't, don't understand why it has to be so tough. So that little video we just took a look at from Mr. Beast, if you're looking at like, well, how do I do this? How does everything work in these bull and bear markets? That is essentially all you need to do. You need to accumulate during the downtimes and sell during the uptimes. And uh, really people make it super difficult, but it's not. Everybody, welcome to the Sunday live stream. It seems like there's a, a reduction in interest right now. And we have to take a look at what's going on, why that is, and of course, where we are as far as the markets are concerned. So uh, you may remember this uh, little chart. This is what we use for the thumbnail this morning. And this is interest over time as far as Google searches. And this was actually put out to me uh, from Ki Young Ju. And he is the uh, founder of uh, CryptoQuant. Pretty great website if you're looking for data, on-chain analysis and whatnot. And what we can see here, this is over a continuum of about six years or so. You take 2019, 2020, 21, 22, 23, and 24, which we're pretty much done. And this, these are Google searches. Now, these aren't total Google searches. This is just the interest over time. So if you have zero interest on one side, then you peak out right before 2021 or so, then you see that uh, there is quite a bit of a, of a jump. And then, of course, over here, you may have you know, 50,000 or only... Uh, 250,000 searches or whatever else it is. And it's just a gauge of just how interest people are as far as like with Google searches. And we can see that over a time, this is almost at its lowest, almost at its lowest point. So what's going on? Well, it's not too difficult to really take a look at. Right now, things aren't going up and people only like to get in, not all people, you who are watching right here, <laughs> I can tell you were not those people. You were the smart ones that actually say, you know what? I know that all the money is made in the bear market or when we're chopping sideways and not when everything takes off the moon so I can buy at the absolute top and then get fun and made fun of on my family at the next Thanksgiving event. That is not what it is. So we take a look here as far as like interest goes. I can just tell you on my channel, first of all, there's two indicators I use. One is of course views across my channel. And also when people start calling me Dan instead of Rob, uh, because the new people that come in, they have no idea. Like they just see Dan, Digital Asset News, Dan, 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 this is the guy. But for you who are here right now, you obviously know that's not my name. It is Rob. So we take a look at that part and that hasn't happened yet. It did happen a little bit in March or so, but then people just went away. But if we take a look at YouTube views, it's just an interesting aspect just to kind of get a gauge. This is from Ben's website, links in the description, get your first month off 10% uh, or so. But if we just take a look at, I'm just gonna show, well, here's my boy, Aaron. He was doing pretty great. Then we have a little bit of a re reduction. Uh, Bankless actually was doing quite quite well recently, maybe because of the hype about Ethereum, the ETF, and and uh, trying to defend that position. Invest Answers, my man, James, used to do pretty well, now still doing pretty good, but uh, you know we can see a drop off. Let's see what else. Tommy Crown, doing really good, but again, drop off. If we just, let me just show everybody. I think that's probably the easiest thing. We can see that, yes, obviously, when there is a massive, massive bull run, around May or so, when things start to really pick up, that's when all the, the views come in. And there's a little bit of a, of a reduction because, of course, what happens? Price goes down. And then we see a big top off. And, of course, there's peaks and valleys, just like the market itself. But as there's more interest and more people come in, it's amazing how YouTube views go. And if we take a look here, here's another one I like to use price metrics, historical risk, because you're like, well, that's great. We know there's not that much interest, genius. Show us what the risk levels are. All right. So again, this is price metrics, just risk levels, and you can turn things on and off. Here's fear and greed index. But I like to use something like this as the gauge, like, should I be accumulating or is there a more downside? Well, we have to take a look at the cycles as well. But if we take a look here, we can see that, you know, as of like May 2024, there was a, a much higher risk piece. And now as things starts to cool off and people are more fearful, then it goes down. Let's turn on market cap risk. See where we're at. No, 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 all the way up. Yeah, we can see, okay, there's a market cap risk. Is there more money's coming in? What about Bitcoin, Bitcoin risk levels? And we can see we're still below 0.5 MCAP regression. Wow, look at that. Bitcoin regression, Cohen quarter, another data piece. And we can see that as far as total risk levels, this is not when people are really excited about the market. I personally like this part because there's no stress on me. 
I just have to do the basic thing, which is just leave my DCA orders on, don't do squat, and just wait for the next massive bull market, which comes because nothing goes down forever. Nothing chops sideways forever and definitely nothing goes up forever. My biggest stress piece right now personally is not screwing up the sell part. I can DCA all day long. I can buy dips with the best of them, but to hit that point where I have to sell, that's why it's hard. And for me, that's why I put massive emphasis on taking profits, which is the last rule you see right underneath here. And I put a video out, it talks about when I'm gonna sell 80% of my crypto. There's a link in the description, you can check that out. Once those indicators hits, I'm out 80%. So that's just me, nobody cares about that. Let's talk about what the heck is going on. Because today, I mean, you would think there'd be a little bit more interest, right? Prices are suppressed, you're getting things spread at a discount. Everybody likes discounts, but not really. If we take a look at the net ETF flows for Bitcoin, did you know we're almost at an all-time high of the ETF flows? Yeah, go figure, right? I think the all-time high, and this is net flows. This, is, this takes into account Grayscale and their dumpage, which they seem to love to do. And then all the different ones that are picked up by Fidelity and BlackRock and everybody else. I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me in the comment section, the all-time high for the flows was 314.9, 314,000, really almost 315,000. And today, or actually on October 11th, you have 313. So we're almost at these all-time highs. And look how far we came. Tell me this isn't sentiment. Because in March, that was uh, when Bitcoin was around 73,000, 214. We have 100,000 plus more Bitcoin net flows than we did back when we had that mass, massive rally. Okay, that's that part. What about the economy? Well, we talked about this the two days straight. On NFA Live on Thursday, we talked about the CPI numbers, which came in not as, uh, not as expected, but there was still an improvement. And then we took a look at PPI, or producer price index, on Friday. And we can just see that the producer price index is actually cooling quite well, which means that inflation isn't going up as fast. Do not be mistaken. There is still inflation. But that is good news because that's what the Fed wants to see. And if the Fed sees that, guess what they do? They cut rates. And everybody likes when they cut rates because that allows the economy to expand a little bit. You don't have to pay so much for your credit cards. You don't have to pay so much for your interest rates for mortgages, houses, real estate, everything else you wanna buy. So if they can cut rates, that means the economy is gonna run. Sounds good to me. And that means that there's more opportunities to save money and invest into those things that you should be investing into. Not financial advice, I'm just saying. And then of course, what about globally? Well, China, this was just came out, I think it was yesterday. China says they will significantly increase debt to revive economic growth. What is debt? They're going to start printing money. At the tune of $325 billion worth of renminbi or yuan or whatever, I always forget the actual uh, currency in China, but look, they want to put out $325 billion. I'm all with you because I'm an American and that's what we do best. We do a couple of things good here in America, uh, diabetes, gun ownership, and quantitative easing or printing money. And you're gonna see that the M2 money supply, I don't know if we, you guys knew this, but we've been doing a pretty good job, quite actually. And to take a look, just to give you a little bit of insight, $325 billion worth of funds. Uh, we did that in like the last seven months. If you take here, the 1st of October, 2023, see the M2 money supply, 20.7. 300 will be around 21.05 trillion. We just did that. We just did that in a very short amount of time and China is flipping out about that. I am. I welcome the quantitative easing on whichever country it is, but you know, once they do that, you have inflation going up. And there's this, there is a process as the funds start to get filtered down. And once those funds start to get filtered down, it starts at the top, I hate to tell you this. And it goes with the banks and the very rich, and then it filters down to the plebs like us, and then we get things. But unfortunately, when the funds go out, and this could be in China, this could be in America, this could be in the EU, it doesn't really matter. They're gonna take those funds, they're gonna buy things that appreciate in value. Money doesn't appreciate in value. It's assets, assets, assets. And that's why I think, I just don't get the mentality of people when they look at these things as far as the assets go and go, yeah, I'm just gonna put that in, in savings and just kind of go for a rainy day. You can do that, 
But if you have extra, extra funds, a little bit, I think it's best to put in assets. But again, that's me and I can't give you financial advice, obviously, I'm just saying. So let's break this all down or let's put it all together, I should say. Let's take all these indicators, price metrics, on-chain metrics, and social metrics. And we took a look at those social metrics, right? YouTube subscribers, down. YouTube views, down. Twitter followers, not too bad. Twitter follows exchanges, a little bit up, so on and so forth. What about on-chain metrics? This takes, takes a look at the Puel multiple and MBRBZ scores, which are two of the indicators that I use when I'm looking to get out of the market that 80% video. Again, links in the description. Transaction, fee, terminal price, all those things. And then we take a look at the price metrics, which we, we took a look at in the beginning. Market cap risk, Bitcoin risk, Bitcoin risk values, logarithm regression, Cohen quarter, fear and greed, and all that stuff. And we add it all together. And we have a summary. I like summaries, so I'm not that smart. I just need things to be simple for me. And this is it, 0 0.3. Now, as far as risk levels go, does that mean it can go down? Absolutely. Does it mean it can go up? Oh, yeah. But the question is, when does that happen? I don't know when it's going to happen, but I got good thing is I got time, hopefully, hopefully. So let's break that. Let's take a look, historically speaking. Let's go back in the cycle to when I got in. Actually, let's go back even further than that. The last well, actually two having sessions ago. This takes a look at 23 November, 2016. This is actually, and we're not there. That's not right. Nah, even worse. Well, yeah, 13th of October, 2016, having year, right? That's where we're at right now. What does this look like? Well, you got a price, met price metrics at 0 0.2. We're at 0 0.3. It was less. On-chain metrics, 0 0.27. Now we're at 0 0.45 and 0 0.059 for the socials at 0 0.2. That's pretty low. But look what happens as they as things pick up. Remember this time? Oh, I remember these days, they were great. And things just went overblown. So if you're taking a look at like, is this a good time? I don't know. Kind of looks that way. Let's fast forward. How about, oh, Let's take this time, 10th of October, 2020. Again, the last time we had a halving cycle. We, had, we went through all the other stuff, right? All times high in 2017, massive dip in 2018, everything when anything crashed. 2019 was kind of like recovery. Then 2020 was the halving year. Look at these numbers. Price metrics, 0 0.3. What was it before? Oh, 0 0.318. On-chain metrics, 0 0.383. 0 0.453 today, a little bit higher. It's a little bit riskier. Social metrics, 0 0.2. Social metrics, 0 0.209. It's almost the same thing. And what happened in 2021? It started to heat up, as it always does, because nothing goes down forever. Nothing chops sideways forever. And nothing goes up forever. So if we look here, 2021, that was the 27th of October. But we didn't top out. Actually, we did top out around November or so, yeah, that's right. And look at those metrics. So if you're looking at this, like, why is there no interest? There's no interest, it's because it's the same thing over and over again. People either think it's gonna go, it's gonna keep going down, which it could. People don't have interest because they're like, I don't have any money right now, I've done so much. Or people have some interest because they're like, I'm not buying that trash, because it's already going down. To me, it's all the game of investments. And it looks to me like I think we're going in the right direction at the right time with the right assets. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. And then lastly, before we get into the Q&A, yesterday we did a video uh, about my portfolio and my Roth IRA. And the idea is to you know, be pretty conservative because Roth IRAs are retirement accounts and you wanna keep things in there that you think have long-term future. So I know like people are like, well, and I explained about the meme coins and silver and gold. Hey, one thing about silver and gold, when we had a crash or we had different economic turmoils that were going around the world, and that would be like uh, any kind of uh, the macro, that could be war, that could be whatever else, which one went down and which one went up? I know people aren't a big fan of gold and silver, but you shouldn't fade it because quite honestly, 
there are a lot of people that are older and they only trust gold and silver. I just, it just makes sense to me to kind of hedge my bet. Gold, just to, re to refresh your memory, gold went up and Bitcoin went down. So when I did this, you know, Bitcoin's still gonna be 60, 65%. I was talking about the layer one solutions, Ethereum, Sol, and Ton. And then people were asking me, what about AVAX and AVAX? I got a lot of that question, actually, AVAX, Avalanche. And I said, I think it's gonna do great. It's just that I don't have it in my retirement account, because I don't know how it's gonna do, but it is in my regular, just day-to-day -day operation portfolio. And I will have to give a, a handout to, or an, an applause, not a handout, they're doing just fine to Avalanche. They just put out, not just put out a game, but they, they've had a game of beta. Now it's on the Epic Store. And even this was a uh, article from Forbes. And I, and I gotta tell you, I think gaming is gonna be gonna do pretty well. Popular new Battle Royale off the grid is actually a crypto game. And the reason they say it like that is because it's so popular right now. Here's one of the founders, or this is the founder of Avalanche. He says there was three and a half million new wallets created. I think that was in less than a month. There were VC hype systems in the last cycle at their peak, didn't have that many users. And this is just one of the many Avalanche games to be launched, as I understand it. And then Decrypt says, just days after its early access release, because the question was, why are there so many, why are there so many wallets? And why is there so many things going on with AVAX? It's because they released this game called Off the Grid. And it is the number one, I guess it's the number one free game right now in Epic. Epic, if you don't know, they're a platform. They're also a game creator, and uh, they were responsible for this little game called Fortnite. I don't know if you know what that is. It's a free-to-play game. It was the fastest game to a billion dollars, and it was free-to-play. How does it get that? Well, it's because people, like my grandson, love to buy the things in Fortnite that they cannot take ownership of, but they love to play that game, and that's cool. That's the American way, and that's, that's the free market, right? Great. And uh, again, Fortnite made a billion dollars in, I think I wanna say nine, eight or nine months, free to play, kind of weird. And now we have Off the Grid, which is a blockchain game, and it's free, 100% free. And people are playing this game and uh, they're having a good time. And when I took a look at this, I'm like, what, what makes this game so good? Well, first of all, I'm not gonna play this video, but it's pretty interesting, like the whole backstory. It's kind of like Hunger Games, Essentially, it's like Hunger Games, but it's a battle royale. And it's just like a cyberpunk, futuristic, dystopian future where you got a bunch of uh, soldiers and players playing against each other. And I mean, not real soldiers, soldiers in the game. And they are using uh, bio-advanced limbs to essentially hunt down and kill as many people as they possibly can. Games, right? Fun times. So this is interesting because there's no token to it. There's no, there's not, there's no NFTs yet. And the way that you can do this, because people always say, well, what's, where's the token, where can I buy it? I thought it was an interesting way to do it. This is the in-game currency introducing gun because the game itself off the grid from Godzilla, which was the um, creators, developers, and then it's backed by Avalanche, which is the blockchain that they actually built everything on. So this is pretty neat. You don't, you don't just pay for, the crypto, you play in the game and you get the in-game currency gun. So you kill five people, you place first as a squad, blah, 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 you get this. And I like this section right here because if you know anything about game gamers, Web2 gamers hate us. Web2 traditional, I guess you call them traditional gamers, despise crypto and NFTs like we talked about yesterday. But I like this part, guns is built with you, player mind, if you don't wanna get involved with the NFT side of the game, you don't have to, let me say that again. You don't have to use NFTs. This isn't a cash grab. Like, let's be honest, the early games of crypto, it was just a cash grab. Tell me it's not, I'll debate you. You can fully enjoy OTG as a free to play battle royale without any gameplay limitations. If you change your mind and wanna try your hand at NFT ownership, you can opt in anytime. Benefit of what Guns has to offer and has fun playing OTG at the same time. So it was a very simple thing. Make a really fun game that gamers want to play and then make blockchain optional. And then they can finally come in. This is like the Trojan horse of gaming, essentially. You can bring people in, free to play, have a good time. Oh, do you want to own some stuff? Or do you want to make a little bit of uh, something on the side? 
Maybe you want to try this blockchain stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Microtransactions, we're going to try to limit those. It just kind of goes that way. And I can see where things are, are going. And then just to, if you're a gamer and you haven't played this, I'm going to show this. This is, this is, I don't know, 45 seconds or so of Crypto Stash playing this game. Tell me if this doesn't look like a game that is out there right now that actually people would want to play. Let me share this real quick. I'll we'll get to a little Q&A. Check this out. Again, this is a blockchain game. We'll have crypto at some point. Actually, you can earn that right now, NFTs. So here we go. Health metric increasing. So prepare for nine quarters. I worry about you right now. I just had to get out of a sticky situation, my friends. Oh, I'm afraid to report that the grid overload zone. Be advised, zones teammate has returned to the battle. All right, guys. Armor plates at maximum supply. Call your mom. Shoot somebody in the face. Now remember, folks. Right behind me. Get the new. Little spicy boys. I got his fucking partner, but. Well, that's a shame for Stash. Anyhow, uh, yeah, pretty violent, but uh, have you watched the games lately? That's kind of like what they are, and that's what gamers want to play, and that's fine. There is one thing before we get in the Q&A. I just don't understand this part. Let me bring this up. Huh? No, 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 no. This part. If the price of everything is going up, and you remember a Nintendo console back in the 80s, uh, that's I'm old. How the heck are they doing this where the games are like 59 bucks? I remember paying for games and they were like 45, 50 bucks back in the 80s. This is, and then of course they still are able to do this. There must be a way of how they monetize, either that's microtransactions or me personally, I think some of these developers are just, there's so much competition that they have to do like upgrades and everything else. So you may, you may pay, it, pay for 50 bucks but there may be like additional things that you can buy within. And then free to play, we know is just at some point gonna be the exact opposite. So that's just my question. I'm like, how the hell do they do that? Because everything else goes up, but it seems like they can sell a game for 50 bucks or 20 bucks or 10 bucks or free. I think maybe just on, on a continuum scale. That was just a question I had. That's it for today, folks. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing when we talk about it. It's time sensitive.